Hey there, I'm David. He shot first. This is What the Print. So I wanted to start today off a bit differently. Of course you know I like tree supports, so I wanted to show my process of cleaning up a model fresh off the printer that has tree supports. As you can see, tree supports tend to form this gigantic enclosure around the model itself. Sometimes this makes tree supports a little bit harder to clean off than normal supports. And what you also notice is that it makes the time lapse often way less attractive, because you don't get the detail of the model coming through and, and more of this sort of enclosure around it. So normally what I do is I start by picking off anything really obvious just with my hands. I also have some jeweler's pliers and uh, a little snipper which came with my CR10 Mini actually, but I've, I find this one of the more useful snippers that I have. As well as some fine nose pliers. Alright, so let's start by seeing what the easiest parts to to pull out are here. I think we can go in with these pliers and just grab this guy. So notice that this model has these two little uh, latches here. This is the landing gear of the Millennium Falcon. I need to be very careful not to break the two that are hidden under here while I'm ripping off these supports. So just as I'm pulling these things off, dump them in my little trash can to the side. Keep, keep the work surface nice and clean. We can clean up any smaller spots later on, but the initial goal will be just to rip these things off. You can actually see where the filament changes that it's breaking off a little bit easier than uh, on any other lines. That's probably just because of the different material. It's from a different manufacturer, so you, you kind of notice the adhesion is slightly different. But added to that, the adhesion will be a little bit different because it cooled down a bit between the layers. Um, one thing, by the way, I noticed in the new version of Cura, tree sports actually come with a little bit of uh, a ground, which is, I think, pretty cool because that was an issue I had in the past where I was having problems with tree sports actually sticking to the build plate properly. And in fact, you'll see in the time lapse, one of these builds actually failed because of that. Um, but I upgraded to Cura 4.2, seems to be working pretty well so far. It was a bit of a bumpy ride getting there, but so far kind of happy. Um, it looks like I can get this full thing off in one go, so let me see what I can do here. Yeah, there we go. Boom! Well, you can see that, right? That's the full hull that it forms around and it needed it to support all the, the fine little details that's more junk such as this little uh, communications array on the top the little guns and these landing gear there's quite a bit of stringing here, I'm not really sure why it could be that I've been printing at varied temperatures because of the different filaments um, retraction settings should be fine but yeah, it seems to also mostly be after the transition, no, there's a little bit on the bottom, but nothing a, a quick shot with a hairdryer won't fix. Um, you can see that model, that little glossy line actually worked really nicely. Alright, and that's basically it. Then you end up with this hole, boom, in the trash. That's that. So a bit of cleanup, I see I don't really like that, so I'm gonna see if I can just grab it out here. I like to use these because they're quite pointy. But if it doesn't work, I'm gonna get a pair of tweezers out. Alright, getting the tweezers out. There we go. Clean up just these little bits in between that couldn't quite get to. Especially because of the minimum infill area setting, it can be a little bit rough with these models, it's kind of okay. Just be a bit careful with 
little bits that stick out like the the landing gear. Notice how I'm holding it with my thumb right down the middle because there is not really something that I can break down the middle, but these will break. These little landing gear uh, spots, you can see that. Whereas the guns in the middle are pretty solid. Yeah. There's a tiny little bit still on there. And then a couple little bumps here and there. Need a little bit of cleanup. And, but for the most part, pretty happy with that. That actually cleaned up very, very quickly. So I think it was back on the first video. A use, user by the name of Bart asked for the Millennium Falcon. And I thought that would be pretty cool. Um, but initially I wanted to print it Joel Telling style and just sort of supersize it. I found a cool model on Thingiverse by someone named of Jeffro. Was sort of hoping because the model was super high detailed that I could split it into four parts and this model was actually already split into four parts and then print each part uh, overnight and assemble this gigantic Millennium Falcon. Unfortunately, I just didn't have enough time. Like, I could only start printing last week on Thursday night and in the end I decided would be super cool to experiment with filament change. This is actually a very interesting process and as you can see I've got this beautiful candy stripe down the middle. Um, but what made this very interesting is that it's the first time I've tried to do filament change uh, in an automated print from Cura using my CR10 Mini and actually using two different types of filament here. This uh, white is a GTEC uh, or Giant Arm uh, white PLA, and the pink is the ColorFab Translucent Pink PLA. So I only had a sample of this ColorFab PLA. Probably going to be ordering more. It's the same brand that I, I printed the Thrall in last week. And basically what I did was I set up some Cura settings to allow me to pause the print at certain heights and then I could come in, manually swap out the filament, and resume the prints. So, in Cura, you can add a post-processing script. And what I did was I found a script, which they have built in, called Pause at Layer Height. Initially, I tried the filament change. The problem with the filament change is with Octopi and my CR10, that technically says it's supported, but what happens is it gets to the fixed height, and the, the printer itself starts making the beeping sound that you have to come in and change the filament. Unfortunately, Octopi disconnects. So I could come in and change the filament, but I had no way of actually resuming it. Octopi didn't really understand what was going on, so I was sort of stuck in this weird limbo where my print was failed according to Octopi, but successful according to the printer. Or at least it still wanted me to change the filament. So got caught in a weird limbo with that and decided to try a different script. I'd seen this on Chuck Hellebuck's video of pause at layer height. I think he covers it. If I can find the video, I'll link to it down in the description. I actually tagged him on Twitter when I was printing the calibration cube because I love his calibration cubes, so I keep using them. So yeah, the pause at layer height, it is compatible with Octopi and basically allows you to pause until you, as a user, go in there and resume the print via Octopi. So I set it to pause at layer height and pull away from the, the, the printer, or away from the print, home its, uh, its nozzle on the XY axis, and that gave me time to swap the filament. What I also set was to reprint one layer, and that basically allows for better adhesion on this layer because you've obviously given it some time to cool, and by reprinting the top layer, you sort of allow it to, to kind of uh, adhere properly to the next layer. As you can see, it worked pretty well. Um, while removing the supports, you could tell that there were two different filaments. I have a feeling it wasn't so much about the adhesion, but more to do with the printer settings, because I printed the same temperature for all of these filaments. And I know for sure that they should be printed at slightly different temperatures. 
the giant arm tends to cook if it uh, if it goes a little bit too hot, and the the color fab seems to enjoy the extra temperature. So in the end, I sort of settled on this candy stripe. Um, my initial idea was to do it around the back so that you you sort of split along here and get this nice uh, what is it the booster section with the stripe. But when I was trying to assemble the model, unfortunately that really doesn't look good along the rest of the model. And I thought, eh, I don't think that's worth it just for the section at the back. So I decided to rather do this beautiful stripe down the middle, almost like a racing stripe, which is kind of cool. Um, and yeah, sort of go with that. As I said, this model I'm really happy with. It scales up very nicely. It does not scale down that nicely. So in the end, I scaled it down to 66%. And the completed model as a single piece scaled down. The guns actually managed to print in detail that I'm quite happy with. But you can definitely see on some of these sections around uh, the, where the pilot sits. Not quite good enough, unfortunately. So in terms of interesting settings, I uh, use tree supports, as I always do, love them, but it's also the only way when you're printing vertically like this to actually get supports to come all the way up to these top two uh, landing uh, gear. And that's because tree supports sort of can curve around the outside of the model, whereas the traditional supports tend to only go vertical. So that helped to keep a lot of detail. Uh, I actually printed it this way around and there's a nice little aerial antenna thing over here, which the tree supports actually managed to hold up and print it very, very nicely. Other than that, it was printed at 0.2 uh, millimeter layer height. Uh, printed it relatively fast. Initially I started on 0.16, but I had several failures for multiple different reasons. Initially because I was using the change filament script, did that twice, Eight hours into the print, failed twice. Decided I was stupid for trying to print my actual model with a filament switch for the first time. You know, you learn. So decided instead I was going to print the calibration cube, which you can see here has the line in it. This took a lot quicker, so I had the room to play around and the, the, the room to fail. So after 16 hours of failed prints on this, uh, managed to get about an hour of failed prints on this and actually fix the issues and then continued with this one more time for some reason and you'll see it in the time lapse the first print failed on this one when I finally had it and that was due to it uh, breaking off from the printer bed so for some reason the adhesion for the tree supports wasn't working I'm not quite sure why but you can see it very early in the print it started some stringing around the bottom uh, happens. And eventually it knocked it over and there was spaghetti everywhere when I woke up in the morning. So started to print again and actually managed to get through it in one, one shot after that. So really happy. Didn't waste too much of this translucent pink filament. Makes me super happy. So in the time lapse, it looks like Octolapse got a bit confused. With all the failed prints that didn't quite finish, it seems to have gobbled a couple of them together into one time-lapse. So what you're going to see in the time-lapse is my initial failed print after I fixed the pause at layer height settings mixed up with the successful print. The first half of the time-lapse is going to be very confusing because you're going to see a bit of spaghetti on the bottom and then as it gets to the, the racing stripe you're going to see a lot of spaghetti, the print vanish and then suddenly reappear with the racing stripe in the top half. I don't really know why Octolab seems to get a little bit confused when you're using funny post-processing scripts, so still makes for a fun time-lapse. Let's get into it.
enjoyed that one. Remember, like, subscribe, leave some comments, let me know what I need to print, because, I mean, I'm printing cool things, and you can never get better than having more things to print. So, hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time!